Great. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to just quickly take for folks who are new to Spiffy Inspire, I'm going to just do a quick intro for Spiffy Inspire. Uh, the problem they solve, what did they do? Um, just taking a step back and why the Spiffy Inspire projects were created, right? Uh, we are all seeing an explosion in adoption of microservices, adoption of cloud services. Um, and in most of the organizations, you have multiple clouds, multiple container platforms. Uh, all of a sudden, there's a big sprawl of uh, both hard-coded credentials and secrets everywhere. Um, and there's no unified way of services to securely authenticate to each other. Right. Naturally, there's a big, big risk that these services credentials are in different uh, repos, different platforms, different tools, in some cases hard coded as well. You'll be surprised. And it's a big security risk. Right. Um, but at the same time, beyond security, if you look at it, it's a big pain for, you know, the DevSecOps teams. Right. Uh, especially in this call, we'll be talking more about from a developer standpoint. So if you're an application developer, you're trying to develop and deploy an application. It needs to interact with another platform, uh, particularly for authentication. You either have to get access to credentials, either you have to learn new APIs every time, or you have to integrate with any identity providers or IDPs. Uh, if your security team requires you, might have to enable TLS between two services. You have to learn how to do that. Um, and, and on the security side, you have to be involved with these development teams, do security reviews every time a new type of application is being deployed. Um, and it's a very cumbersome process for them too. What Spiffy Inspire enable is basically provide a standard consistent identity plane across all your cloud and container based apps and services. Right. Um, and they do so by providing uh, strongly attested cryptographic identities that are platform agnostic. So you're able to establish trust for your software services uh, without the need to rely on any network based controls or, or rely on any secret based um, solutions. Um, just doing a quick uh, clarification, uh, Spiffy is a spec. Right? It's a set of specifications uh, that allows you to bootstrap and issue identity to software services across heterogeneous environments. Um, um, at the heart of this uh, specification, um, uh, there are these short-lived cryptographic identity, what we call um, SWIFTs, uh, which are available through um, an easy, simple to use API. And you'll see some of it as you know, Andrew and Mac show it you know, in a live coding session as well. Um, so workloads use these identities uh, to authenticate to each other. Um, you can use them to establish MTLS or, or, by use, or by signing and verifying a JWT token as well. Spire is a production ready implementation of the Spiffy API. Um, another unique thing about Spire is highly extensible. That's why it makes it easy for to be integrated to third party CAs or create your own plugins and so on. Um, Spiffy Inspire, as most of you know, are part of CNCF. They joined CNCF in 2018, I believe, at Sandbox stage. Now they're part of the Incubate stage in CNCF. So we recently moved there because we showed progress in terms of adoption, in terms of uh, uh, the quality of the code, in terms of the contributions, uh, in terms of you know contributors being outside of, let's say, companies like HP. Um, and we have seen more and more companies, including Uber, TikTok, Bloomberg, Square, um, every day we see a new contributor or someone else adopting it as well. Um, they are also tightly integrated into other open source projects, including uh, Vault, including Envoy, including OPA as well. Um, and there's a lot of detail around these integrations on Spetry.io as well. Um, so from a development standpoint, what you know, development teams are able to get and what platform teams are able to provide is basically a consistent dial tone API, right? Uh, by dial tone, I mean it's sound just like dial tone. You pick up a phone anywhere in the world, it sounds the same. And similarly, you can make authentication the same. At the same time, it's it's very secure. It's very granular. Um, it's based on strongly attested cryptographic identities. The security piece is there, but at the same time, because it's a standard API layer across infrastructure, across your platforms, the developers, uh, the complexity of authentication, um, and even authorization to some extent is encapsulated to a development teams. They don't have to worry about long lived credentials or misconfigurations uh, and the overall time that's spent even beyond security, um, beyond making the, the application interactions much more secure um, is, is a lot less. And you know, for the developer to sum it up, 
if you look at the end yes. developer, it uh, so, too much. <laughs> sorry, um, I don't know if it, if you want to turn yourself on mute. If you're not um, on mute, usually not. Yeah, sorry about that. I think someone was on mute. Sorry about that. Um, going back, value for developers, less it's less complexity, like I mentioned, higher velocity, secure by default. Uh, developers, there's no need to learn for application developers to learn about cryptography or MTLS or uh, APIs of new platforms, a new identity platform, no matter what platform within your organization interact with, um, it's a standard API, right? And they spend less time in reviewing security policy, compliance, working on compliance and security reviews, uh, or credential management, which includes renewing credentials, um, remembering to uh, renew them every time and make sure that you know the same hard-coded credentials or certificates or tokens are not um, there for long periods of time. Um, and actually they don't have to work worry less and less about platform integrations too, at least from an authorization, authentication and to some extent authorization as well. Um, and authentication is pretty much a few lines of code for them. And with that, we have a, a few uh, uh, libraries, uh, Go Spiffy and Java Spiffy. Um, so Harding, first of all, do you want to add anything about developers to Spiffy Inspired? Did I cover everything? Then it will be great if you can show us a live session for coding session for us using the Spiffy Go libraries. Yeah, thanks, Amir. I think you, you covered a, a good breadth of topics there. Um, how much time do I have? Um, I think we have pretty much time. You have 20 minutes at least. 20 minutes? Okay, all right. So let, let's get it right into it. Um, what I'm gonna demonstrate first, let me share my screen. Oh, you, you've disabled, oh, there we go. Thank you, Amir. Okay, um, is that visible? Can everybody see that, that terminal? Big enough? Yep. Okay, all right. So what I'm gonna demonstrate, um, we've done some, some work uh, recently, earlier this year to improve library support inside Go for people who are consuming um, the work with the Spiffy workload API, um, which is, which is you know, the API that the developers can use to obtain credentials without, you know, with zero configuration. Um, so I'm gonna demonstrate, you know, uh, building out a couple services using that API and, and uh, how we can get, um, you know, turnkey authentication. Um, so let's let's just create a couple services here. I'm going to call this service one, and um, it's going to be like a fresh project here. So initialize our new Go module here. And I know in advance that I'm going to be wanting to use our our new library. So That's the module path for the V2 version of the library. There's an old V1 version that's that's going to be deprecated here pretty soon. Um, all the good stuff is under is under V2. So um, before I actually use that library, um, let's let's just fill up, I guess, the basic scaffolding of this this server. So um, we'll just do a, a little HTTPS server here. And I'm going to elide all of like the normal sort of, you know, path checking and routing and, and method checking and all that sort of stuff that you normally do in here. And this, uh, this uh, HTTP server that we have here um, is just going to uh, it's just going to return some counter um, and we're going to in fact Let's just make this and we'll just uh, increment the counter every time this handler is called. And we'll return the results of that. Okay, so let's um, set up our HTTP server itself. We'll just cheat. And uh, I believe this is going to take the address and then the local host and then the handler itself. Oops. All right. And we should probably be good citizens and do some error checking here. 
Um, for all this demo stuff, I'm just going to kind of cheat. And if there's any sort of error, I'm just going to panic out so we can see that. But you obviously don't want to do this style of error checking in the production code. But for demo purposes, it seems fine. So um, let's go ahead and build that real quick. And let me start a Tmux here so that I can. Uh, So it happens and we'll go ahead and curl that service. Right now it's, it's not protected, right? It's just going over HTTP. And then we can see back. Oh, that's the port at the end. That's why it's so confusing. Let me uh, make this a little bit larger. Okay, we can see that the counter is going up. All right, so this is our, our microservice. It's uh, very complex. Um, anyway. Now we want to be able to add, let, let's write the client side of this. Um, so I'm going to go back over here. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to create our second service that's going to be a client to this other counter service. And let's go ahead and borrow this. function here. And for the HTTP client side, we'll just do an HTTP dot get for localhost 8443. And that's going to give us back a response and an error. We'll check the error. We'll close the we'll defer a close on the response body. And then we'll just go ahead and um, copy out the response body to, uh, to standard out. And good citizens again and check our errors. Okay, so let's again run our server um, on this side. On this side, let's go ahead and build our client, uh, a different microservice, you know, we'll call it and run it. Oh, I messed up. All right, missed the HTTP scheme on that. Okay. Okay, and again, we're counting up. Okay, so great, we've got our two, our two microservices set up. Um, and now, of course, the whole, the point, whole point of this uh, webinar is to figure out how we can enable Spiffy authentication across these two microservices and, and mutually authenticate each other. You know, service one doesn't want anybody to be able to call him and increment this counter. And service two wants a guarantee that he's actually calling service one and incrementing the right counter. So um, before we can actually code this up, um, let's, let's start up some, uh, some Spire server and agent infrastructure here. Um, so I'm going to step out here and we are going to build Spire here real quick. And let's start a Spire server. And uh, we have, you know, there's lots of other examples out there on how to like, you know, kickstart Spire and, and do that. So I'll, I'll gloss over that because we're really interested in the code. So real quick, I'm going to, oops, wrong directory. I'm going to um, create a token that I can join the trust domain with, for, with the agent. And I'll give my agent a spiffy ID of example.org slash node. Here's my token. Uh, before I actually launch the agent, uh, I'm going to create a couple workload registration entries. So we're going to give the first workload uh, for service one, we're going to give that the spiffy ID example.org service one. Um, we're expecting it, that workload to be running. Uh, connecting to the agent that we're going to run. So I'll give that parent ID there. And uh, we'll identify that workload using a service one username. 
Okay, and we'll do the same thing for surface two. Okay, we've got those two entries created. Now we can go ahead and start our agent. Great, agent's running. And we've got our identities there. So let's get back to business over here. All right, so with the ghost Biffy library, um, again, we, we want you know as, as turnkey as possible implementation for consuming identity out of the workload API. So what we're gonna create first is an X509 source, which is something that the library um, uh, source. And this X509 source is something that you can use to um, obtain both X509 SBIDs and X509 bundle material over the workload API. So we're going to create that source. Uh, the source, uh, when you're done with it, needs to be closed to tear down the connection to the workload API. And now that we have that source, we can use that source to create a TLS configuration. So let's first start by changing up how we're using the HTTP library. Give it our address, give it our handler, and now we want to set up our TLS config. And then we can instead call server dot insert TLS and provide an empty path to the certificate key file because we aren't loading off disk. We'll instead be loading it uh, through out of the workload API. So um, let's Okay, let's create our TLS configuration. So doing this is as easy as, there's a, there's a TLS config package. And we're gonna create an MTLS server configuration. And this takes a few different parameters. The first parameter is uh, an X509 SVID source. And it uses this of course to obtain the server SVID uh, for the MTLS uh, connection. The second is a bundle uh, source, X509 bundle source, um, that it uses to um, obtain a bundle that it can use to authenticate incoming client connections or client certificates. And then it takes this authorizer, which is used to, which is a hook that you can put all of your authorization logic into. Now the X509 source that we created here um, fulfills, it satisfies both the X509 SBID source and the X509 bundle source interfaces. So we can just pass the, this guy into both of those parameters. And for now, um, we'll, we'll change up the authentication uh, authorization portion later, but for right now, we'll just authorize any incoming client. Okay, so we, now we have a TLS configuration. We've configured our server, HTTP server, with that TLS configuration, and now we're listening. It doesn't like that for some reason. Oh, it's because the errors are defined. Okay. All right. Now let's see. Uh, let's see if this works. So we'll build and run this service. Ah, okay. So we had a failure configuring our X5 new our X509 source. Um, and the failure was that the workload endpoint socket address is not configured. So the library needs to know um, where the agent Unix domain socket is that it should connect to in order to, to talk to the workload API. And there's two different ways that this can be configured. Um, the first, we can provide some, some options into the call to new X509 source that, I, that uh, point to where that, um, that Unix domain socket lives. The other option is, uh, by the spiffy specification, there's an environment variable that it will pick up on, which is spiffy endpoint socket, I believe. 
So we'll set that environment variable uh, to the, the default location that Spire server uses for the agent socket. And uh, then the library should pick up on that. So let's go ahead and build and run. Oh, I missed even more. So if you can't tell, I, I uh, wanted the natural experience here. So uh, I didn't prepare very much for this, uh, this love webinar. I want it to be as, as uh, raw as possible. Um, so anyway, we need to prefix this with the Unix scheme, um, which is all uh, defined by the spec. Okay, and now we're running. So on this side, um, before we augment our, our other service, um, let's go ahead and just uh, hit that other, hit service one using OpenSSL so we can see what's happening there. We want it to dump out the certificates and Just right. All right, what's going on here? Let's see. Ah, okay. All right. Sorry, one more one more thing went wrong. Remember, um, in fact, we can we can see what what what's going to happen here. Okay, so remember when we registered the workload, um, we we told the workload a, or we told Spire that the incoming workload needed to have needed to be run as a particular user in order to to match up with the registration entry that would give it the the service one or service two spiffy IDs, and we're not running under that user, and so. Um, this, this uh, TLS configuration isn't actually able to, to obtain uh, the certificate or bundle off of the workload API because the, the, the uh, workload is unidentifiable by Spire. So um, let's go ahead and uh, we'll add a little logger here so that we're not surprised by that again if it happens. We'll add a logger that dumps out to uh, standard out here. Okay, now let's go ahead and rebuild this. And now we can see some logs coming out uh, where we're trying to fetch credentials over the workload API, but we're getting back a permission denied status telling us that no identity has been issued to our workload. So now to fix things, let's run this service as the right correct user. And there we go. Now we're able to successfully obtain material. And so now when we try and connect, you see this giant spew here from OpenSSL, but if we go here and grab the first certificate, and dump it, we can see that the server certificate is indeed serving up uh, an X509 SVID with the correct Spiffy ID. Okay, so now let's augment service two. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna create an X509 source. And heck, let's add that logger again, uh, just in case. out of that and we'll also make sure we clean up the source when we're done. And now that we have our X509 source, let's change up how we're using the HTTP client. Now let's provide our TLS config here and then we we'll use the client to do the get. And this TLS config will be configured similarly um, as the one in ser service one, except that instead of an MTLS server config, we're doing an MTLS client config. And again, the X509 source 
can be used as both an SVID source and a bundle source to configure this configuration. And then we again have to provide an authorization hook. And for right now, we'll just authorize any. Okay. And then with that, uh, maybe I got the, all oh, right, it's on the transport, I believe, that we have to set the TLS configuration. Okay, so let's configure our transport. We won't bother um, setting the default options on this. Um, but normally, you probably want to borrow the, the default option, options off the default transport um, or set your own. But we'll take the zero values here and I believe this is maybe TLS client config. Is that correct? All right, there we go. Okay, so now we should be able to build this and we will run it as the correct user this time. Service two. Oh, and we have the same problem with the workload endpoint address. So let's set an environment variable. Oh, and I made the same mistake I did last time. Forgot the Unix scheme. Oh, and one more mistake. We forgot to switch this over to use HTTPS instead of HTTP. All right, there we go. Crossing my fingers here. And there we go. Now we're counting up. Okay, how are we on time, Amir? Uh, we're good on time. You can take a few more minutes. Okay, all right. So let's jump in here. Um, actually, let's run server, service one again. Let's add some, some authorization logic here. So instead of authorizing any, um, we have a few choices by default. This is, again, just a, a callback that gets invoked. Um, so you can supply your own implementation here if you want, and that callback which you, uh, receives the spiffy ID of the of the peer and the um, list of uh, verified certificate chains um, for that peer. So we were calling authorize any, which uh, allows you to connect to anybody. Um, but let's get a little more stringent. Let's let's um, require that we're connecting to service one. So we'll use this authorize ID. Call back. So authorize ID takes the ID of the serve of the peer, in this case um, our server. So we're going to define the server's ID here. So this one. So this one ID. There we go. And then we'll require that we authorize with that one. And so if we rerun this again, it should still work because we're connecting to the right person. But if we go in here and change this ID to say service three or something like that, and we run, then it's going to fail. And we're gonna get back an error that says that we encountered an unexpected ID with service one. Okay, so let's put this back. And on this side, we can do the same sort of thing. We can come down and instead of accepting connections from anybody, we can, you know, uh, service two ID. And this should, everything should still work here. But if we change our authorizer to expect a different ID, then on this side, it will fail. And there's not a lot of information that you get back on the client side because this is the actual TLS handshake that is failing. So all we know is that the server rejected our certificate. But on the, on the server side, you do get a little bit of logging that says there was an unexpected ID um, and prints out the right spiffy ID. Um, and there's all sorts of things you can do with this authorizer. You can you know, plug this into something like OPA or, or you know, some other authorization system. 
um, you know, to do your own custom authorization here. And, and that's it, like this is, there's some more options you can use when, uh, when uh, configuring the source, um, you know, you can dig through the library to discover those. Um, but this is, this is uh, you know, all you need in order to get um, spiffy authenticated mutual TLS um, between your, your microservices. Great, great, Andrew, thanks for doing this. Any questions for Andrew at this point? Maybe you can take one or two before I hand it over to Max to show us the Spiffy Java library. Well, quiet group. Um, Max, you wanna, let me just give you, uh, I think Andrew, if you can make him the host because you're the host now. Okay. Yeah. How do I do that? <laughs> Click, uh, let's see. Yeah, just there we right go. Click. All right. Yep, you're the host now, Max. Okay. Uh, I'm undergoing some technical problems, but hopefully my internet connection remains stable. Um, I will share my screen. Give me a sec. Can you see my screen? Yep, we can. Great. Um, okay, a uh, quick view of the Java Spiffy library. Uh, it recently got a bit refactored. Uh, a lot of interfaces uh, were added and new functionality and the interfaces were made uh, modular and more um, testable. So it gained the stability and modularity. And as well as the X509 speeds, uh, now we can uh, handle um, JATA speeds um, bundled. Um, the Spiffy libraries um, contains three models. Um, we have a core model that has um, the interfaces to work with the X509 materials fetch for with the Webhooker API. So um, uh, if we take a look of some of these interfaces, um, we have some interfaces to fetch the suites, to fetch the bundles um, for both X509 suites and shots. Um, and we have um, this interface that is a, a source of SPs and bundles. And we have an, um, an implementation uh, that, we, we, that we use um, for creating um, SSL connections um, using X509 materials fetch from the Google API. So what this library does it is make it's very easy to use the uh, SVITs in the context of Java security standard interface with its providers and key manager and, and stuff. So it's um, mainly ad abstracts away all the complexities to, of the interaction with the Google API to fix shared identities and um, exposes an API using classes of the Java security core. Uh, library. Um, we have um, the other model is a Java Spiffy provider that is an uh, implementation of the Java security provider and can be registered as, as a provider uh, in the Java architecture, like adding to this list of um, providers that are standard for the Java architecture, we can, our, our, we can add our Spiffy provider and use it to create key manager and trust manager uh, to be used to secure sockets connections. So um, let's see how we can use um, these classes of the Java um, Spiffy library to create uh, secure socket connections. So I have um, 
I have a very um, simple example of a gRPC um, server and client. I I have created um, already a, a very simple server and client. Um, as, as Java has some boilerplate, more boilerplate than, than Go, I already wrote uh, some parts. Um, what we're gonna use um, is a dependency from the Java Spiffy, where you're gonna use all the Java Spiffy provider functionality. These dependencies are pulled from the Maven Central. Um, for running Mac OS, we are adding Mac OS support. This are as a uh, gRPC, Netty, KQ support events that are required for macOS. Um, it's not required for, for Linux. So I have here a gRPC server that uh, gets um, requests from a client um, using um, plain text connection. So we want to change that. We want to add um, SSL um, encryption. So we we start with the server. Uh, we're going to add an SSL context configuration. This requires a gRPC SSL context. Uh, we need to provide an SSL context builder. And here um, we say for, for the server, um, we can pass uh, multiple uh, options of a uh, uh, for a key manager, we will just provide a key manager implementation. In this case, uh, our key, uh, specific key manager implements a Java security key, key manager, and we will see how to do that. And we'll say client assert. Okay, we need a key manager. We have in the provider a key manager. This is um, a class that provides a certificate change and the private key during a secure socket negotiation. And it takes an X509 as its source interface. So we need to provide here X finance source and uh, we use hey Max. Uh, this is Neil. I had a quick question. Uh, yes. With the key, um, can we uh, when we deploy in AWS? I was curious. Uh, is there like an integration with KMS, uh, or is there a path? way to store the key uh, in KMS? Um, no, it, it will get the key uh, from the Google API. Okay, but if uh, I want to, uh, if the deployment, if the key needs to be stored in a vault like KMS, uh, is that, no. uh, is that no, something? It will not store uh, anywhere. It will be handled in memory okay. by the manager along with the uh, X509 uh, SV with the, the certificates. It, all the, the key materials are kept in memory. Gotcha. Yeah. If you wanted to not go through the workload API and, and um, you know, you can use Spire server directly to mint identities for your trust domain through the administrative APIs. You know, you could, you could mint, you know, SVIDs there and populate KMS potentially that way with that kind of you know, uh, that's kind of short circuiting the, the whole Swift sure. workload API thing, but it's it's certainly possible. 
Great, thanks. So, um, and we need a SPIFI Trust Manager, and this implementation of the um, of a Trust Manager uh, of a Java Securities Manager, and what it does is provide the bundles uh, during a secure socket negotiation to valid validate trust. So it will use the bundles to um, validate the certificate presented by the peer during a this is a handshake. And it takes just um, an interface, a bundle source of explain on bundle bundles. And we can provide as well a supplier of the accepted PFI IDs. So it would validate um, the SPFI ID in the certificate presented by a peer that it's, um, it's presented in this is present in this uh, set of, of, of accepted SPFI IDs. Okay, um, and both uh, the SPFI key manager and trust manager would take um, an X509 source. So we, we can source interface and we will use a default if I'm source implementation. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> source. Um, this method um, creates an F X final source um, connecting to the workload API. So this method blocks until the first S bit from the workload API, API is fetched. And it will handle um, an S bit and a set of bundle in memory and will handle the the renewals. So every time uh, I work with API, the expiration has uh, an update to, to push. And um, it will get this source will get all the experimental materials and update the memory. So now um, we are good to run the, the server and we can see what happens? I have um, aspiration running here, and I have uh, an identity that will be used by my workloads. And this new source uses as well um, the default. Um, endpoint variable, so I have defined by my environment the soap endpoint. So I have here my inspiration listening, and now we can see that um, the default X final source was created and it received uh, an identity. So the server has started, and now on the client we can say. Uh, use the cell connection um, something very similar a little different but we got now your client will provide a trust manager provide a key manager as well say yield um we will use the same as the server we we'll copy this done to option from um and now uh, okay exception We are good to run the the client. So 
So the client will connect to the server and we send our request and we get our, our written response. And we see here that um, as the TTL, we define a TTL very short of just five minutes. So it's already um, renewed with a new speed. Now let's run the, this, the client. Um, it works. Um, we got the response from the from the server, and it was using the both both were logs are using the, the same identity for simplicity purposes. Uh, we can see on the server the client connected and the clicking sent. Um, we can say, for example, a hey, um, don't accept other. Spiffy ID than, for example, um, example, service. So if we try to run now the client, it will try to validate the Spiffy ID presented by the server and it will not be accepted. So it will give, um, it will throw a SSL handshake exception because the accepted present, the SPVID presented by the server is not accepted anymore. So that's for the gRPC example. And now um, I would like to show you how to uh, use the provider in a um, Spring Boot application because it's something a little different, it requires um, some kind of uh, configuration um, on the backend side because um, I need to configure the, the Tomcat connector. So in that, in that case, uh, I have a Spring Boot application, a backend service um, exposing a REST API. And now using HTTP, um, a front-end application using a, a REST template to connect to the to the backend, and um, right now it's, it's not using encryption. So uh, let's add a mutual TLS for the server. Um, we would you we would add uh, some Tomcat configuration, saying key store type use spiffy and it requires um, some properties that are not used by the spiffy keystore um, provider but are required otherwise um, it will throw an exception and we we'll say authenticate the client and as I show you on the documentation to plug um, a provider into a Java security architecture, we need to add to this list our class. So what we wanna do, what we're gonna do is um, create um, a just Java security uh, file configuration to add our provider to the list. And we need to tell the, um, the Java architecture, Java security architecture that use, um, to use this algorithm to uh, choose which key manager uh, factory and trust manager factory will be used to create a key manager and, and, and trust manager. So um, from the, on the backend, we just need to do that, configure the, the connector, the server properties, and add the provider to the um, uh, to the Java architecture. Um, we have the dependency added, the provider, and we will run the application using passing this file, Java security configuration files. 
and just try what happens if we run the application. Okay, uh, Tomcat started uh, using HTTPS and we see that a uh, default X finance source was created and it received the identity from the Google API. And on the front end side, um, we need to configure this, uh, I, I'm using the REST operations uh, interface um, but I'm using the rest and play implementation. So I, we want to uh, configure the rest and play to use an underlying HTTP client that uses our uh, Spiffy, Java Spiffy provider. So what we need to do is to add um, an HTTP client, um, HTTP request factory. I'm going to say mm, components passing um, an GP client. Here I'm using a custom and we said uh, to not validate the the host name in the certificate and we will provide a necessary context. And for, the, for creating this necessary context, um, we will use a factory that we have in the, in the, Spiffy, in the Java Spiffy provider and we provide some options. And here on the options for creating the cell context, we will provide, again, this the X finance source, how uh, we can provide um, this, the accepted Spiffy ID to be validated during the secure socket connection. So we have source, uh, we shall accept any Spiffy ID. The source, we we'll use this again, the same default Inception of hundred. Here, let's say build. Ah, here it's not this. Um, and something we need to do is to change it to use HTTP to connect from the front end to the to the back end. So now, if we run the front end application, we will see that it creates um, a default. X finance source, hopefully. Yeah, here it created an X finance source and got the, the identity. And if we try now to um, use the X finance source, uh, the, um, the application, different application, uh, is, is functioning, it's, it's, um, it's fetching the, 
data from the from the backend. It's connecting using neutral TLS to the backend and and it's fetching the, the data. Um, we can, for example, do the, the same validation we we done on the other example, adding um, a validation of the SPFID here. Instead of saying accept any, we can uh, provide a supplier as accepted SPFID and we say connection collections and accept an, a different PVID. We start or start the application. Hey Max, I know we're top of the hour. I see a couple of folks started to drop off. Thank you so much for hanging on. I think you have a few more minutes, right, Max? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm already there. I'm Perfect. showing this, um, showing that uh, it pro uh, validated the SPFID of the server. And I shall say that um, I have another example with, I don't know, I don't have time to show it, but if you can take a look the, at the code of these examples, you can go to my, um get to have um and take a look at the javascript example there there is a spring boot application using jots uh fetch from the world api so you can see there how to use the jot functionality from the javascript great uh, max if you want to put that link up in the chat window too because it's easier for folks yep. to copy it um uh, hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope